when he was going to be sentenced, he said to the judge, I'm not asking for mercy, for I find it somewhat absurd to ask for mercy for something I did not do. And there was one time after he had told me about many of the murders, he came in and he sat down and his demeanor was different. And he said, the person sitting before you never killed anyone. I don't think that he is kidding or pretending that he's innocent. I think that there is a Bundy state where he did not do any of those murders. In fact, he referred to the person who killed, he called that the entity. Let's say the late winter, early spring of 69, is where we start to see this. All these entities begin to reach the point where uh, it was necessary to, I mean, to act out. It takes over the, uh, the, the basic uh, uh, consciousness mechanism and more or less dictates what's going to be done. It was an inobtrusive at first. It's something that's kind of grew on me that uh, began to uh, visualize and fantasize about what violent things. By the time I realized how powerful it was, uh, it, was, it was a big trouble. I had a clue then that he might suffer from a dissociative disorder, but then when I saw the writing and I saw that he did at times seem to become his grandfather, who was a very violent kind of person, uh, that's when I got interested. I got a call from his lawyer saying he wanted to meet with me before he was executed. So I did go. The attorney, she said, Ted wants to know if you can say that he is incompetent to be executed. And I said, I would be laughed out of town. I just can't do that. And I said, and all the work that we've done to understand people who do these kinds of things, will not be considered valid if I say something as ridiculous as that. But he clearly knew he was going to be executed. Yes. He knew what an execution meant. That's right. And he knew what he had done. And I said, besides, the warden has three other psychiatrists out there waiting to refute this. Uh, what was his reaction? He said he, he, he could understand that. Testing. He gave me permission to take the conversation. January 23rd, 1989. I asked him, why did he ask to see me? And he said, I suppose you're more interested in me and in, in, in what was going on in my head and how this developed. I was not fascinated by his uh, perversions. I was far more interested in how he got the way he was. Whatever his motives for asking me to come to Stark and mine for coming, our four and a half hours together on the day before his execution were riveting. Did you ever kind of look at them while they were dressed as bathing? He said, what's a curiosity In my teens. Well, this is uh, something I've never told anyone. I almost promised myself I never would. Well, yeah. But they... When the tape recorder was off, Bundy told me that he had had a sexual encounter with one of his sisters. Later, his mother told me that Bundy had told his sister that she should be careful because there was someone out in the world who was killing women who looked just like her.